Okay, goodbye to me too. Teacher, your sound. Okay. okay. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. You can continue. Okay, thank you. I'm going to start now. All right, good morning, uh, great pals. Welcome to today's LO lesson. My name is Ling Mujiga, and I am your L host for today, your teacher for today. So basically, yesterday there was a bit of a technical problem, so I'm sorry for what happened yesterday. And then today, again, I put my slides up, so I'm not sure whether my slideshow is going to be able to move. But however, I am going to deliver my lesson for today. It comes up with a bit of an audio, a bit of an audio feedback. So uh, because of the audio feedback, I might not be able to move my slides, but I'm still going to give you the lesson today. So basically, you're just going to have to, but that's why I'm allowing you to see me today. So I am on your screen so that you can see me. I want us to connect. And then you're allowed to speak to me in the chat box. You're allowed to make your comments. So today we're going to speak about, we're going to speak about, uh, we're still on chapter seven, democracy and human rights, because that is the chapter that you guys said um, you are struggling with. And then from I think tomorrow on, we're going to start with uh, some revision. So after we do some revision, we're going to go through past papers whilst we're at it. I know, did you hear that you guys are going back to school on the first of June with Trick? So we've had uh, quite a short time together. I know we only started together on last week doing things. And now you have to leave again. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to try to finish off human rights and democracy, and then we're going to start going through uh, revision. I asked you to tell me the things that you want me to go through, the things that you did not understand, and then we're going to try to do them and some, answer some uh, exam questions for the next two weeks. Um, then you are going to go back to school. So today's lesson is about, if you could write this down, it's chapter seven, unit two. So it's chapter seven, unit two. I know we were so busy with human rights and human rights and uh, democracy, democracy and human rights rather. So today's theme is the extent to which media reporting reflects a democratic society. So we're going to look at how a democratic, how, how the media behaves in our democracy. So we're going to see whether our media um, reflects the, the country that we live in. So basically our newspapers, our radios, our televisions, the, the topics that are covered, how they are covered, how are they reflecting on our democracy. So, uh, you know, we have different new, uh, news publications. Uh, we have our Sunday Suns, our Sunday Worlds, and then our papers that are now, that have announced that they're closing down, like the Daily Sun. And then we have our magazines, our True Love, our Destinies. You know, Destiny was closed, now it's back. And Bonner Magazine um, decided uh, they they've decided to close their doors during lockdown and after lockdown. 
And then we have television, we have page TV in our country, which is DSC, and then we have our public broadcaster, which is SABC, and then we have uh, uh, Netflix, and we have other dishes to open view HD and other companies. So there are different forms of media. And then we have social media. We have our Twitters, our Instagram, Facebook, and WhatsApp. So basically in our country, we have free media. We are allowed to, to indulge. We are allowed to read newspapers. We are allowed to be on social media. And we are allowed basically to to share on our on everything that we want to share on uh, with regards to our social media. So um, again, we are going to look at the extent to which these different social media platforms that we are allowed to share in. Other countries don't have that, that privilege. There are countries that only ever allow the national broadcasters to be the ones that are broadcasting the news and telling people uh, what is going on. Like, for instance, in North Korea, you only have the government TV and the government radio. You won't have free publications. And then in other countries where they are sort of like dictatorships and things like that, then that's where uh, you will have countries not along the media, but we are very lucky in our democracy that we have been given the chance to hear from different media platforms, hear different, we hear different opinions, and we have people who are objective to tell us what uh, they believe uh, is right for us. So, uh, um, the lesson objective for today is that you must know the extent to which media reporting reflects a democratic society, taking into consideration the topics covered. So we're going to see how the, the media is covering topics, the positions taken by the editors, positions taken by the editors and the space they allocate in how they allocate their space in the papers uh, and in different social media platforms and in the geographical distribution. So how far widespread are your publications going? Are our newspapers reaching the rural areas and other like hidden communities? So we're going to look at that. So as your first uh, point, we are going to look at the topics covered in the media, the positions of viewpoints taken by editors, the space and airtime allocated to topics, including the geographical distribution, where factors, uh, factors you can use. So these are the factors that you can use when trying to come to the conclusion of the exchange or level to which the media reflects a democratic society. So we're going to look at the factors that we need to consider when deciding whether our media is reflecting our democracy or not. So there are a couple of factors. So with each factor, we're going to see whether our how our media is doing with regards to that factor. And these factors are the ones that are going to tell us how fair our media is. So the first factor is topics covered, like which topics our media is covering. So newspaper editors, radio station managers, and boss, TV bosses choose the topics to cover and the time and the space allocated. So our media bosses and our editors are the ones that are choosing which topics are, which topics are being uh, reflected. These are our headlines in newspapers. This would be our headlines, and then in news bulletins, these are your main stories. And then yeah, with radio, these are still your main stories and the stories that you focus on. So these are the topics that 
are chosen by the by the editors and by our media owners. So our media owners are our media companies are sometimes affiliated, depending on the country, to uh can be affiliated with different political parties. So obviously they will carry the political views of those political parties. So when when uh media companies are affiliated with a particular media, political a uh, political party, then what happens is that um, their views will be swayed to the to that side. So the editor will cover topics that interest that the um, the editor will cover topics that are in line with what that political party says uh, they should be in line with. For instance, if the party, if a political party is pro life you know um maybe pro-abortion and maybe in support of feminism so what will happen is that the party will also the the media publication will also be pro-life and pro-abortion and will also cover feminism so depending on your the views of the company and the views of the editors that is the direction that the publication will take the stories will be in line with the political views and the views that the the, um, the views that they have. Let me check the inbox. Okay, there's a YouTube link for you guys to watch at. Sorry for the noise in the background, if you can hear it. So yes, that will be it. So moving to moving to our next point. Uh, the media, the media reflects the democratic. The media may be independent, but may also serve the political views of the company. In some countries, the companies may serve the interests of certain political parties, therefore influencing the views of the editors. And obviously when the, the view that the editor takes is the view that, that the, the publication will take. People in rural areas, no, we still, we're still with topics covered, many of them, so this, is, this would be the second bullet point, Many of them are guided mainly by commercial interests, making shows that will get high viewership, help draw adverts whom you can charge a high price uh, according to viewership. So sorry for stuttering, this is about commercial interests. This is about a commercial interest are uh, advertisers Advertisers are people who buy a time to advertise in your publications, uh, the advertisements that you see on TV, on your magazines, and on your newspapers. These adver these the advertisers are buying space. So um, the publication will say it's ten thousand rand for space, maybe on a newspaper, maybe a small ad is ten thousand rand. A bigger one is 20,000 rand, and maybe on radio they'll say three minutes is 20,000 rand, five minutes is 50,000 rand. And then for television, maybe they'll say during the day it's 50,000 rand, and prime time, uh, which is on about six o'clock, eight o'clock. Uh, seven o'clock, they'll say that is the, the most expensive time slot. So then maybe they'll say that uh, that is going to be the slot where you pay a hundred thousand rand for maybe a minute. So basically, advertisers buy a time. So the, the media houses try that is the where they, they, get, they get most of their profit from. So if they don't get draw, if they aren't able to draw advertisers, then obviously they're not going to be able to turn over the amount of money that they need to get in order to run the publication itself. So 
the traditional forms of media are suffering a decline in people buying and watching and reading because of the decline in readers and viewers and listeners. So basically, our traditional media forms are the radio, the TV, and the newspapers. They are suffering a decline in viewers and listeners, readers, because uh, people have moved towards um, social media and reading their news online. So people are reading their news online. They're looking at Twitter for what's trending and they following the the news on Twitter and they following the news on Facebook. So they're also using the search engines Google, Amazon, Chrome. They're using the search engines to search for news online. So you might find that the news that is on social media on or online is instantaneous. So they find that the news on TV comes a bit later. They come maybe five hours after the actual event has happened. So there has been, because of the pattern of people moving to online, there's been a decline in people in people buying newspapers and listening to radio. So this is in, in uh, other countries. In fact, most countries, I think, right now. So it means that these traditional forms of media are failing to attract the number of advertisers that they used to attract. So meaning they make less mo they make less money that than what they were making. So this decline means less revenue. So then the media houses choose to cover stories that sell in order to raise their view in the their viewership. So a rise in their viewership means more money because that means that they can now attract ads. The narrative is then changed by this commercial, this commercialization. So then they'll go and look at what people like watching and what interests people. Then they'll go with that. And then basically they will start they will start showing that in the TV shows or speaking about that on radio in order to attract more people to watch the shows. So basically, when you do that, you might find that there's a fine line now. You might now be find yourself covering topics that are less educational and maybe now you're covering more gossip. I mean, it, it just becomes there's just a question of whether it's newsworthy or not. So uh, basically then it means advertisers can now influence then because you are desperate for advertisers. Advertisers can now even drive the narrative and give the direction of which questions they want, uh, which topics they want to be covered by the media houses. So now it's capital that is making the decisions of what we should watch or not too. So if they don't go by people, then they go by advertisers because now they really need the advertisers to, to make money because that's where the profit comes from, like you said. So then advertisers end up deciding what uh, topics they should be sharing. Uh, and then... Public views and interest, yes. So that is the first factor. The, the first factor is topics covered. And then the second factor is positions taken by editors. So what the views of the editors are and the, the positions that they take. So editors of newspapers and magazines have a lot of power. They do. They do the allocation of topics, space, and content. They can also express their view, their own views in editorials. It reflects the position of the editor and how the editor feels about an issue. So you know, basically, those those uh, in the in the front of a magazine or in the front of a newspaper, I think maybe the first page of a newspaper, 
the first page of a magazine. I also know on one of our news um, channels, there is a editor's view where they have the topics that maybe the editor has been interested in. So in the first in the first page or of a newspaper magazine, they will have an editor's note, and that is where the editor can give their opinion of whatever they think is the most important topic of the day so maybe they'll be right now they'll be commenting on corona so they will be giving their own own views of what they think should be done about corona and whatever they feel should happen so that that gives you an idea of the direction which the content in the newspaper or the magazine is going to take because it gives you like a feel of what the paper is about because whatever the editor's uh, opinion is in their opinion piece gives you a reflection of what the newspaper or what the magazine is about because after all they are like the principal of the school so they are like the principal of the um, the edit the it the publication so um so we saw on positions taken by editors the question remains if then the content is still newsworthy gossip or whether it is still educational okay the topic can also change to suit the adverse the the, the advertiser choices. So the media that are registered as private have the right to express their views as they wish and control and direct their narrators. The state-owned ones may find themselves being influenced by the government. So the narrative or the, the, the position taken by the editor can also depend on who owns the media. If the media is privately owned, then they have the right to say whatever they want to say, uh, as long as they are within the, the freedom of speech rights and responsibilities. So if the uh, media is state owned, then obviously the positions taken by the editors can maybe be, be pro-government. Let's just hope that out our SABC, our national broadcaster is like objective. So you'll make your voice about that because I'm sure you do watch SABC news or SABC programs sometimes. So you'll decide whether you think they are objective or not. So the state owned ones may find themselves being influenced by the government. Who owns the media house can have a major impact or influence in the reporting of that media house. So editors have a lot of power because they decide which stories are published and how those stories are written and how they should be report, reported. So the editors will even decide on how the articles in their publications are written and how they should be reported. So they may give more space to topics of their own interest and their views um uh, may be reflected in the publication so the stories that they feel are more important or the topics that they feel the public might appreciate more will be the ones maybe that are bigger maybe bigger in terms of if it's a newspaper then the article will be longer if it's on the news on radio news then there will be more time allocated to speak on that subject, that interest, or that the editor feels is is important. I mean, if it's on if it's on TV, it becomes obvious because you know usually programs are like thirty minutes long. So if like you spend an hour speaking about something or on a particular subject, then you know immediately that basically that is something that is very close to the editor's heart or what they felt that is more important or is the best news of the day so the editor's views can 
be seen from the type of content allowed, space allocated, and slant or focus of new support. Some editors may ignore difficult issues because they believe that their me the media is about entertainment. So basically, that is like uh, when a media house decides that we're not going to cover politics. We're not interested in covering politics because that's not what our target market is anymore. Maybe we're about entertainment and lifestyle. So immediately when we start covering topics about politics, that's when our audience will start losing interest. And maybe we decide to start covering maybe uh, the president's court trial or court case. And then we're usually a publication that broadcasts about lifestyle, maybe travel and tourism. So maybe after the court case, we may have lost our audience. So these are things that uh, companies do consider that if they go the political route or say uh, things that they feel are more economic or more about development, maybe they will lose their customers because they feel that um, if they go that way, they will lose their, their customers' interest. So they choose to stay away from politics. So the problem with this is that then it becomes about newsworthiness and then it becomes about whether um, they are educational or not. What is their role in our democracy? Is it just to feed people gossip or what is it really about? So we have covered the first two factors, which is the, the topics covered and in the positions taken by editors. All right. So some editors may also ignore difficult issues because they believe their media is about entertainment. So the third uh, point, the third factor is going to be space allocated. So this is how much space is given to a topic. I think I've already touched on this already, The how long an article is, how much airtime you're getting on radio, and how much, how much airtime you've been given on the news. So uh, basically, space allocated. Space is about which page an article appears in a TV or magazine or how much time is given to it in a TV or radio broadcast. It is also about whether it appears at the beginning or end of a news report. So basically space in, it is very easy to see space in a newspaper because we have what we call a front page. So on the front page, uh, we see the story, the, the big headline or the main story, the story that the publication is running with. So you know that the paper is running with the story about maybe uh, fake pastors or fake prophets. So maybe how they're ripping off people. So maybe that would be the story that they are running with. So you know that maybe they're about human rights and they feel that people should be aware of this kind of behavior. So basically, you'll see the type of story that the, 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 the editorial or the publication has in their front page tells you also about the paper's views. So the space allocated is very important. So space allocation is not always fair. And many people feel that their stories are not properly told in the media or get little space. So current topics get more space. So topics that are more recent will get more space. So for instance, um, a topic that will be more recent would be how many people currently have Corona. So maybe if we're looking at that, maybe about 15,000 couple of people have been infected, then people want to know the active cases, how many people have died, which is the province that has the most infections, for instance, like um, Western Cape has the most infections. And then I think Durban comes afterwards, KZN comes afterwards. 
so it's things like that. That is current topic and that is what people are interested in. Those are topics that will get more space to. I mean, yes, uh, space allocation is not always fair because sometimes you can feel that the story was not newsworthy enough to be able to get the coverage that it's getting. So you find that there's a vague story or something that really doesn't make sense. I mean, there's so much written on it. I mean, you find that there's an, the, there's an important topic and there's very little written about it. So some people may feel that it is unfair, the space allocated is unfair, or maybe they weren't reached for their opinion. It was one-sided and they never took their opinion side. So uh, the article, most of the article will consist of a one-sided view. I mean, the other person's view is not taken into consideration. So the stories in the front page the stories in the front page show you what the publication thinks is important, articles in order in the order of importance. So analysts take time looking at the trends and what people watch and the results help them to make the decisions on space allocations. So basically research has shown that in South Africa uh, the top 10 shows in South Africa are like soapies. I think the top nine. The top nine of the shows that are played um, on the most watched shows in South Africa are actually soapies. So I think about two, three, four soapies from our national like broadcasters, Generations, Movango, uh, I think what's the biggest one is Zalo. I think Zalo is number one. So people watch a lot of people watch a lot of soapies in our country. So that shows you where the advertising is going to go. So advertisers are gonna go and fight for space where the the soapies are playing. So again, the the research analysts will find out which which topics people love watching or watch following, whether it's um, shows that drag people, gossip shows where they give you the latest information about people. So maybe those are the shows that people will love watching. Maybe shows like the ones on this new channel that has shows like uh, cheaters, like people cheating, like single people looking for dates, like people with in-law problems, some shows show are dating shows, looking for a lover or a friend, marriage shows and stuff like that. So I see that those are shows that people, young people are also following. Most of them are on page TV. So basically, when research analysts find out which kind of shows that people watch, then they let the they, they editorials know. I mean, basically, those are the shows that will get um, a time, and those are the kinds of shows that will get produced. So basically, if you want... If you want more newsworthy things to be shown, then you need to make a decision to watch the newsworthy shows. So if you don't want to watch soapies all the time, or if you don't want soapies to be number one the whole time, then you might want to watch a news bulletin next time or a current affairs show so that we can shift the way we think as South Africans. I think we should watch more news. I think that the top 10 of the most show the most watched shows in South Africa actually shows like the kind of content that we're taking in as a country. This is just my opinion. Uh, maybe in the top 10, we should have had more news and current affairs shows, but it seems like we have more dramas and more selfies in there. So it does show that South Africans prefer entertainment and they prefer like watching soap operas and things. Maybe it's because they want to take their minds away from 
uh, serious things, maybe they're always protests and they, there's always negativity going around. So they feel that, you know what, I come back from work, I just cook, uh, taking care of the kids. So let me just, let me just watch a soapy to take my mind off things. Maybe it relieves the stress and it helps people calm down. But I think as someone who has read a lot, I feel that it is important for us to watch more educational shows and to have our educational shows in the top 10. So again, if you do want those kind of shows, then you would have to watch them because then they will get more viewership and that's what our publications will keep on. So that is a safe allocation. And then geographical distribution. So um, geographical, geographical distribution. The access of information for different groups in South Africa is not equal. So basically, people don't have equal access to to information. The people in the rural areas, for instance, are very far from the busy uh, life in the CBDs where people have access to many stores and lots of groups of publications. There are more magazines and there are more newspapers on the shelves. So you find that people in the rural areas don't have access to news in the way that people in the um, in the more urban areas have people in the rural areas may be limited to listening only to local radio stations they also may also they may also not be able to pay for newspapers and other forms of media so finances do also take um, a role play a role in how our media is consumed so you find that people in the rural areas mostly have uh, one radio station or the community radio station to listen to and they don't take in other forms of news like they don't have some out of the electricity grid so they don't have electricity so they can't have a TV or anything that requires uh, electricity and then others just can't afford to pay we can afford for pay TV um, however much the subscription is, whether it's for Compact or the or for less channels, but at least you have money for pay TV. You might not have one for the the Explorer or whatever the the Show Max, but at least you have access to TV. Some of us, some of you, I don't have, might have access to Netflix, so it's very expensive. Well, it's expensive for people that can't even afford to have a compact box. So basically, some people don't even have money for for those for paying for pay TV, and they can't even stream information online because they don't have money for data. Wi-Fi is very expensive in the country. So access to information is unequal. So what our media should be doing is making sure that uh, news and information gets to the rural areas and gets to even people who are less fortunate, people who don't have money to who, who don't have money to buy news. So uh, those are people that you find um, are only listening to radio and maybe have a local newspaper. So they, they don't have access to information like we do. Like you can change your channel and watch, you have like an option to watch maybe five or six types of news. You can move from ENCA to African News Network to SABC, CNN, BBC, Al Jazeera. Like you have a whole option of which type of news you want to watch. And someone else only literally has like SABC1 and that's it. So access to information before voting. So this is also very important because as you know, 
people do need um, access to information during voting. It is important that everyone accesses information when it comes to voting time. I know the, the local elections are going to take place next year, if I'm correct. So everyone during this time must be able to make an informed vote. So we want equal access to information so that we can make informed votes. So people need to know how to vote so that the IEC, the Independent Elections Committee, needs to get information to people. Uh, I think if that's the correct like the abbreviation. So basically people have access to they need to have access to the IEC's information on how to vote, where to vote, which voting stations to use, how to register. So people need to be kept up to date with regards to things that need to be done leading up to the election because we don't want information about uh, news about um, the elections being rigged or people having chaos in the lines, people fighting in the lines, ballot papers being missing, or people breaking the rules about how far they need to be from the voting stations. If there are political parties, maybe not allowed just to stand outside the gates of the school that has been allocated for voting. So this is the information that we get through media and this information should get to people. Also, political parties informing people about their manifestos, what they're going to do, promising people, and people maybe even calling back into radio stations and calling back, uh, writing back to newspapers, calling into live news shows where our politicians are, where they are trying to garner votes, the shows that they are trying to get votes from. It's also about us interacting really during that time. It's not just about uh, IEC and these political parties or the government giving us information. Also, it's about us interacting with the government. We have a chance to ask. Um, we have a chance to ask. Sorry, let me just pick this up. We have a chance to ask our political party questions. For instance, we can ask them, what have you been doing in the past four years? This is what you're saying you're going to do, but uh, what, a, what have you been doing in the past four years? So it's making people accountable. It's asking questions to the IEC, like what if I have moved to, to a different province and I'm not registered in this province? So let me quickly check the, the, the chat box, right? I have five minutes. I have five more minutes for my lesson, All right? So let's quickly move, all right? Let me just quickly move on to the next factor. So that is about exist information so yeah in fact that is the last one yes we have come to the end of our lesson so the summary would be I'm going to read out the summary for you quickly you can analyze the following information you can analyze the following information to decide the exchange or level to which the media reflect a democratic society uh, the information would be the topics covered in the media, the positions or viewpoints taken by editors, and the space and airtime allocated to topics, the geographical distribution, in other words, the accessibility of information to different groups living in different areas, is also an indication of how much the media mirror or reflect a democratic society. So um, the activity that you would do for yourself is answer the question, how does the media in South Africa reflect our, dem our democratic society? So what do you think, how do you think the media in South Africa reflects our society? So that would be something that 
you would have to go think about it and write down. If you could just write down your opinion for me, I'll ask for it tomorrow uh, in the lesson. I think I'll ask for it. So please go and write it down, take a piece of paper and think about how our media reflects our society. So, you know, we've got our newspapers, we've got our news shows. I'm sure you watch SAEC, you watch um, ENCA, you watch also SABCN, and those are our three main news channels. And then you read our newspapers from Sunday World to Sunday Sun, um, our different newspapers, The Herald, and I'm sure you also, you've read a magazine, so you have, you also listen to radio stations, whether you listen to your home radio station, Mercedes or Cozy, or you listen to 5FM or 94.7, Metro, whatever list radio you listen to. So please make an analysis of how do you think they reflect your, our media, how, how do you think our media reflects on South Africa? How do you think they are portraying South Africa? Are they doing a good job? Like, what is their narrative? You can make an example if you want of your favorite uh, radio show or your favorite uh, news channel and say, like, I like the way that uh, my, the news radio that I listen to, Power FM, I like the way they cover the news. This is what I like about them. This is what they do. I think it's free and fair because they cover these on whatever, whatever. So you can do that for me. So I'll ask you to give me your opinion tomorrow in the beginning of the lesson. So uh, anybody else have anything to say before we leave? I'm sure we've only got a minute left. Does anybody have anything to say? You can go to the chat box quickly. Anybody have anything to say? Are you all okay? Is everybody okay? All right, so see you tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning for your next LO lesson, grade 12. So thank you very much. Uh, for more information, you can contact uh, our website. You can go to our website, Africa Teen Geek. And then you can also follow Africa Teen Geek on all social media platforms. The handle will be at Africa Teen Geek. And then remember, you can email me. Uh, my email address is litsikapuleng at yahoo.com. So Litsika is my surname. Uleng is my name, and then that is in small letters, so at yahoo.com. I'm sure you've seen my email address in my previous, oh, no, it is on the current slide. There it is. Sorry. It's on the current slide, Uleng at yahoo.com. So, yes, yeah, thank you very much, and then sorry about yesterday. Sorry about yesterday's lesson. Uh, there's a problem with my laptop, so I'm having, I'm experiencing problems with my laptop and my PowerPoint, so I tried my best to deliver today's lesson, and I hope you'll be here tomorrow too. I hope to interact with you tomorrow. Don't be so quiet, and maybe you'll also get to see me again tomorrow in, the, in a video. So thank you very much and goodbye. Goodbye, see you tomorrow.